One last example should cover all the different types of sugars you might see. We've done an aldohexose, an aldopentose, a ketohexose, and this time, as you can see, the carbons are already numbered. This is a heptose, and you can also tell from the carbonyl being at C2 that this is a ketose. So this is going to be a ketoheptose. So step two, going to redraw and turn 90 degrees. So there we have it. And again, it's numbered from right to left. Step three, we're going to connect the second to last hydroxyl oxygen to the carbonyl carbon. There we go. Now we're on step four, which is to erase the double bond. And again, it automatically gives me my OH there. So I'm going to turn that into a red hydrogen and delete my hydrogen on the red oxygen. So we've just done step three, connect the second to last oxygen to the carbonyl carbon, delete the double bond between the carbonyl carbon and the oxygen, move the hydrogen from this oxygen to that oxygen. Now it is time to count how many atoms we have in our ring, noting that C7 and C1 are not part of our ring. The ring is right here, going down here. So if I start with my oxygen, that's atom one, and counting around two, three, four, five, six, I have a six-membered ring. Remember that the ketoses give you a ring size that is one less than the number of carbons. So we had seven carbons, and now we have a six-membered ring. So I'm going to find my six-membered ring here. There we go, nice flat six-membered ring. Oh, that's five. Let's try that again. There we are, six-membered ring. I'm going to put the oxygen in the back right corner as before. Turn it red so you know that that is this one. Now it's time to number the carbons. Again, look at the oxygen. In the previous drawing, it's attached to C2 and attached to C6. So I'm going to number the one in the front right with the lower number and the higher number one in the back left. And then just put the carbons that are in between. So there we go. That's step seven. Step eight is to add our hydroxyls. And again, I'm going to skip the anomeric carbon, the former carbonyl carbon, and start with C3. So if we look here, C3 has an OH that is down. So I'm going to make that down. Then C4, the OH is up. I don't think this is going to turn out quite right if I don't move these away. There we go. So C4, the OH is up. On C5, you can see that the OH is supposed to be down. All right, C6 doesn't have any OHs on it, and we save the OH on C2 for step 10. So step nine, we're going to add the CH2OH. 
we're going to check and see whether it's D or L. So we're looking, whoops, we're looking at the red one, the second elast OH, and it's on the right. So this is another D sugar. Most of the ones that you will see are going to be D. So since it's D, that means our carbon 7 needs to be up. There we go. So that is carbon 7. And now we're on step 10. Put the hydroxyl on the aromatic carbon to reflect alpha or beta. I'm going to make beta here. So they are cis to each other, both up. That is beta. And then I'm going to copy and paste so you can see what alpha will look like. So I'm going to move my OH so it is down. That's going to give me alpha. But we have one more step. Don't forget this step. I always do. That's why I wrote it down. So if it's a ketose, you have to remember carbon 1. The OH was up, so carbon 1 has to be down. And then for the alpha, the OH was down, so carbon 1 has to be up. And there you have the alpha and beta anomers of a keto heptose.